It's time now for our regular segment, Canadian Dream. And fitting in, integrating, often one of the hardest things for many young new Canadians. Some feel completely disconnected from the parents who brought them here and from the new country they feel doesn't understand or accept them. For the Somali Canadian community in particular, it is creating a dangerous vacuum. You can encourage more of your children and more of your, your neighbors and anyone around you to, to send uh, people like him to this jihad. It would be a great asset for them. That's Omar Hamami. He's an American who is now a top commander with Al-Shabaab. It is a group that recruits young people as part of its fight to build an Islamic state in Somalia. Some of the recruits have come from Canada. Now, last week, U.S. officials announced details of 14 arrests, including Hamami and two women who allegedly went door to door in Canada as well as the U.S. trying to raise money for the group. My next guest says those arrests are a significant sign Al-Shabaab has shifted from simply a Somali problem to an international one. Ahmed Hussein is the president of the Canadian Somali Congress. Joining me again this morning. Thank you. Good morning to you, Ahmed. Let's talk first about what Al-Shabaab is, because a lot of people, I think, in Canada and the U.S. are hearing this name for the first time. So what is this group? Al-Shabaab is a nihilistic death cult that is openly affiliated with Al-Qaeda. They are very active in... Uh, southern and central Somalia and their goal is to take over Somalia to use it for two reasons to use the geography of Somalia as a launching base uh, for Al-Qaeda and to use the Somali people as uh, Somali individuals mm -hmm. as uh, tools to provide money and blood to their uh, worldwide struggle and we heard in that propaganda video from mm -hmm. uh, Hamami yes. youth uh, is, is a particular target. I understand that Al-Shabaab yes. roughly translates to, to the, the youth. youth. Yeah. So youth is a big focus for them. And we've seen seven uh, Canadian young Somali men yeah. disappear as a result uh, back in 2009. What are you doing now here to make sure that they don't get more access to young Somali Canadians? Well, the uh, number of things. Uh, one is to make sure that uh, members of our community understand uh, without any doubt, uh, go through the fog of misinformation about Al-Shabaab and expose Al-Shabaab for who they are, which is uh, a nihilistic death cult that has, uh, that has no interests uh, of, of Somalis at heart. They are there to, to destroy Somali culture and, uh, and use Somalis, but they won't uh, contribute to any development in Somalia. And now they're exporting their terrorism mm -hmm. to neighboring countries like Uganda, where they were responsible for killing uh, 74 uh, Ugandan uh, uh, citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the first things is to expose their agenda to the community, but more importantly to also continually uh, push back against the messaging that they, uh, that they use, uh, like the video that you showed uh, for Mr. Hamami, who was incidentally in Toronto for a year, integrating into this uh, vulnerable community. So we have to uh, fight against folks like this and make sure that their messaging is answered and, uh, and also work towards integration. And as you push uh, the community to sort of uh, open its eyes to the potential threat uh, yes. of recruitment from Al-Shabaab, you also pushed the federal government, you pushed Ottawa yeah. uh, this year mm -hmm. to ban this group. Well, once uh, Al-Shabaab uh, uh, had, beyond any reasonable doubt, uh, contributed to terrorism both uh, in Somalia and abroad by openly affiliating themselves with Al-Qaeda, uh, members of the Somali community had gone to the Canadian government and asked for the uh, Al-Shabaab group to be designated as a terrorist organization. That was the best thing that could have happened to this community because now it's virtually impossible for Al-Shabaab to recruit in Canada and to raise money. Uh, for their uh, uh, nefarious uh, deeds. And uh, in March 2010, the federal government uh, went ahead and uh, designated Al-Shabaab as a terrorist organization. What do you think it is about, and we've spoken about young people and the threat to them in your community in particular, yes. what is it that makes uh, many of them so vulnerable to recruitment by a group like this? Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a number of issues that are at play there. They, initially, there was a an appeal to Somali nationalism. Uh, a lot of young Somalis were told, come and help your country uh, in its hour of need against mm -hmm. an Ethiopian invasion. And the Ethiopian invasion was disastrous for Somalia because it uh, led to an increase uh, in support for uh, these kinds of movements. However, now, what, uh, after, after a year and a half of the Ethiopian withdrawal, people now see uh, Al-Shabaab for who they really are. And they've become brutal by the day 
they have uh, done uh, horrible things to Somalis and uh, and I, I think it's hard to now uh, recruit uh, with the same message. In the same way. Yeah. Uh, and the story with the arrest will likely keep pushing your message home to the yes. community here. But you're also part of uh, some significant mentorship initiatives to make sure that young Somali Canadians don't feel disenfranchised, don't sure. feel like they don't have opportunities in yes. this country. Tell me yeah. about that before we let you go. Uh, Absolutely. I'm, I'm very proud to say the last time I spoke to you, we were about to launch uh, the mentorship project, expand it to Ottawa. We did that. We were aiming to get uh, about uh, 20 uh, mentees uh, mm -hmm. to uh, uh, integrate them into the professional workforce. And uh, we went to the event. The event was so successful that we had 75 young people sign up on the spot. So the need is there. We have We've noticed that uh, th these are things that need to happen uh, to move the community along. The community has integrated to some extent, but there's a deficit of professionals. Mm -hmm. And I think by pushing uh, programs like the Mentorship Project, there'll be a cadre of leaders in the Canadian Somali community that will have opportunities in this country and that will be a shining example of how uh, young people should not be lured by uh, criminal gangs and terrorist organizations like Al-Shabaab. Ahmed Hussein, thanks so much for coming in for us once Thank again. Thank you for having me.